relative to uh, Hardaway's injury, um, as far as will he need surgery or anything like that to repair whatever's going on? With uh, we'll have a we'll have a statement if that is the case. Uh, but he won't play any more games, obviously, which we which we've announced. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's for now. That's where we are. Frank, can you talk about Carl Anthony Towns' game and how he matches up with you guys? He's tend to play in the last few games against you. Had thirty point games. Just He matches up well against us. We don't match up well against him. <laughs> that's. Kind of how it's gone as far as trying to stop him. I mean, he's a great player, and you know, I there are a few guys his size that can do the damage inside, mid range, and long range that he can do. And he also drives the ball. Um, he's gotten better each year as a passer because he's seen plenty of double teams. And um, so I, I, you know, he's got an amazing. Uh, record as far as durability, he doesn't seem to miss games. Um, it looks like he loves to play, so he's a great guy to have on your team, and he's a really tough guy to match up against. Coach, are we going to uh, see more of Daryl Macon tonight, or Costas obviously could go some of the younger guys? Very possibly, yeah. Uh, uh, Costas, I, I'm not sure if he'll be available tonight or not. I got to talk to Casey. He's, um, you know, nursing a. A bit of a banged up knee, so uh, I'll know more in a bit. You'll see on the active roster whether he's active or not. Is it too early to tell how long Dorian will be out? I mean, I, I wouldn't think it's going to be long, um, but it, he, you know, he got eight stitches in the in the lip, and um, it's very swollen. Uh, I remember when Berea had this earlier in the year. You know, it's it's very similar to that. Um, I'm hoping he's keeping ice on it because it's really, you know, it's it's really a, a tough thing, you know. Um, but I hope he's doesn't miss more than tonight. Did he lose a tooth too? I don't think so. I I didn't hear that. Okay. Coach, uh, D. Rose is not on the trip, um, but uh, as far as I know, but can you talk about the season that he's had prior to for to Minnesota shutting him down? With Rest of the year. Well, he was terrific, and a very, a very much a, a resurgent, you know, type of thing. And uh, didn't is it this year he had a fifty-point game? Yeah. Yeah. Against, I mean, uh, he looked, he looked great. You know, I, I, he hasn't moved, hadn't moved this well, in um, in a while. But uh, you know, when this year when you're playing against him, I mean, he just, he just had the bounce. Um, he was attacking, and he's a big problem. And um, so, I don't know what his ultimate injury was that shut him down. Was it an ankle or something like that? It was or an ankle injury, yeah. yeah. But you know, he he was uh, he was an MVP. Um, had a lot of great years in Chicago, and then you know then um, had some um, challenges with injuries. It seems like he's been in the league for an awful long time, but he's still quite young. And so I expect him to come back next year and have another strong year. Coach, aside from obviously winning, are there any specific goals you have in mind for your guys for these last handful of games? Well, just growth together. I mean, you know, the, the, the new guys that came over in the trade um, have gotten more and more of a chance to play with our guys. So. And you know Hardaway, of course, is out. Porzingis uh, will not play, but um, Porzingis is practicing with us. And so tomorrow we'll have another. Um, my hope is to have another, another live practice and involve him in that. And he's he's playing with the starters, you know, with that um, with that group, which which I think is just a, a good a good thing for you know everybody. Um, you know, Burke's done well. Um, Justin Jackson's gotten a chance to start. Um, he's putting up some, you know, pretty, some pretty terrific games recently, and there's there's some things we're working on with him that uh, that he's doing a good job with, and so, you know, just keep the momentum going. Chris, how important is uh, is communication between players on the court during the course of the game? Well, it's 
it's hugely important. In what context? Uh, just verbally about where guys are going, pick and roll, things like that. Yeah, it's it's probably most important on defense. Um, the number one <clears throat> most difficult thing to guard in today's game is transition. It's getting back and finding guys, and you know, it isn't like the old days when you always knew there was going to be one guy running to the rim and two guys to the corners, and then you know maybe two guys were, uh, were, were maybe one guy was following at the three-point line. Now you got four guys running to the three-point line. Um, a lot of times there's cross matches created with uh, you know some teams are playing more zone. Um, switching causes that as well. And there's more switching in today's game. So, uh, you know, transition defense and communication in that area, I mean, is probably the most important element of being successful in today's game. Is that something that you guys also practice during practices where just the verbal um, players talking to each other about where, where they should expect the other person to be and stuff like that? Well, it's not so much about expectation. It's about... It's about getting back and, and getting a man. And in transition, you don't you don't have a set man. You have you have the nearest man. You have a man, and you got to get a man. And hey, sometimes you, know, you end up with little guys guarding big guys, vice versa. And you know, but the, the important thing is to find all those guys. And and then if you can, you know, kick guys out and get guys matched up by size, then that's that's always a positive too. But if you leave a guy open. You know, you're going to give up a transition three, and um, I believe this year in the in the NBA, teams are shooting transition threes at a 52% rate, you know, which is phenomenally high. Um, and if you don't match up and they get a three and happen to miss it, um, you're going to be scrambled and have a hard, hard time rebounding, you know. And then the second chance threes, you know, are even higher than that because guys are just standing there waiting and stepping straight into the shot. So... Um, you're right. You know, communication is uh, vastly important, really. Uh, but it starts with it starts with transition D. Rick, a minute ago, you mentioned that Porzingis was practicing and that he was working with the starters. I'm curious if you're getting an idea of what you envision out of him defensively next year. Is he is he a five? Are you wanting to funnel things to him? Is there a zone? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of different ways you would like to implement him. Are you getting a feel for what the best way might be? Yeah, I'm getting a feel. Um, I don't think it would be wise to put forth any deficit, definites at this moment. Um, I believe he's going to be able to guard fours and fives. Um, depending on who the guy is next to him, uh, you know, we would like to have a seven foot three guy give us rim protection, you know, if possible. Um, in which case, you know, he, he'd, he'd guard fives in a lot of cases. Um, I expect him to be a four on offense, though. And so, um, you know, with his skill set and the way he moves on the court, and uh, I believe he's going to be a good passer. Um, you know, he'll be a four on offense most of the time. Um, but uh, on, d on defense, I think he's got the flexibility to, to play both positions. Rick, obviously, Luke has a tremendous talent and would probably succeed in anywhere. But how much do you think he's benefited this year from having Dirk as a teammate? And where do you think that's been most impactful? I do think he's benefited from, from Dirk being here. Uh, you got to remember, though, Dirk missed the first 25, 27 games. What was it? I can't remember. remember? 26. 26. Yeah. Dirk wasn't in training camp. I mean, that, it would have been even more impactful if he'd been on the floor. Um, but just being able to see a guy like Dirk work through, you know, this year's challenge, which was, you know, coming off the, the foot surgery after a long rehab and having it go a little slower than we had anticipated. Just the, the consistency of how he approaches everything sets, uh, sets an amazing tone for um, any group of young guys. Uh, now that goes for Porzingis too, who's only 23. Um, and Porzingis is, you know, he, he had been trying to get with Dirk for the last two or three years to spend some time in the summer workout or something like that. And so now, you know, now he's had a chance to, to really spend some quality time with him too. So um, it isn't just Luca, you know, it's Brunson, it's, 
Um, the other young guys we've had in the fold the last couple, three years, you know, Kleber, um, Finney Smith, you know, Yogi when he was here, those guys all benefited a great deal. And um, there's just something about the consistency, you know, a guy who's an all-time great player. Like in, in Indiana, you know, we had Reggie Miller there. And, um, you know, when Reggie retired, you know, there, there was a certain void um, by not having that guy who was, you know, had been the face of the franchise, had, had always prepared meticulously for, for big moments, which he, you know, virtually always succeeded in. And so, you know, whenever Dirk decides to, to walk away, you know, there, there, we'll have the same void here. Rick, you're uh, just one win away from becoming one of the 17 coaches to win 750 games. I know you don't like to talk about that kind of stuff. Can you talk about that? <laughs> 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 no, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't talk about it. So what's the key to that, though, to get that many wins? Good players. <laughs> Good players and great owners, <laughs> of which I've had many. <laughs>